Hello and welcome to another video tutorial from ComputerGarGar.com. This tutorial will look at creating dependent drop down lists in Excel. On the sheet on screen at the moment, I would like to be able to select genre from a list in column F. That list will consist of the two films mentioned in column A here. And then from another list in column G, I would like to select a film from that genre. So if I selected comedy from the list in column F, in column G, I only have the option of these four films, as it is dependent on the genre of comedy. Now the first thing we need to do is create range names for each of these lists and alternatives. So going one by one, I will select the two cells that contain the genres that I would like to use. I'll click inside the name box and I'll just type genre as my range name here. Pressing enter at the end to confirm the entry. And I'll move on and do the same thing to my this one, my comedy genre. When selecting the cells, I'll make sure that I ignore the heading because these range names will provide our list entries. And I don't want the heading to be an option within my list, so I'll exclude it here. I'll do the same for romance. Okay. To check that my range names all enter correctly, I'll just click on this little drop down list next to my name box, and I can see the three entries are in there. Okay, let's go create our lists. To create a list, we'll use a tool called Data Validation, a very popular tool in Excel uh, for many, many means. The first thing I'll do is select the whole of column F. So wherever I'm in this column, I'll have this uh, list available. Onto the data tab of the ribbon and the data validation tool which sits over to the right. Within here, I like to choose to allow a list. And then for the source, I'm going to type equals and then genre. So I'm going to refer to that range name that I created. So by entering this here, I'm actually referring uh, for a list to consist of cells A2 and A3. If I click OK, and I'll have a look at that. Here we go. Wherever I am in there, I'll have that option. Now for column G, this drop down list will be dependent upon that first list. I'll use the data validation tool again. For a drop down list, once again the option will be list. This time for the source, I'm going to type equals and use a function called indirect, which allows you to refer to range names. And then my answer to that, I'll just move this window out of the way for a moment, is going to be dollar f2. So I, although I've selected the whole column, it knows really that I want to refer to cell G2 here. F1. The, uh, the first cell in the column. I'll put the dollar sign before the F so it knows to move downwards in the column, moving one direction. But by typing this, I really mean the whole of column F. That's really what I mean. And I'm referring to the list that's been used in there. Okay, and the option that's been chosen. So if somebody chooses comedy, uh, then my film list now refers to the range name of comedy. Let's check how it works. Click on OK. Let's choose a genre first. And here we go. And maybe further down I'll select a romance film. Fantastic. A dependent drop down list. This list is dependent on the first one. And there you go. It shows other uses of the range name and the data validation tools. Uh, like most Excel tools, they can be used in for many means. Uh, sometimes different to what their, their primary purpose may have been. But a very useful feature here for when you're creating things like forms in Excel and invoices, that kind of thing. Okay, hope to see you all again soon. Please feel free to check us out. We're on Facebook 
Uh, check out our YouTube channel for some of our other videos and also on computergaga.com.